Well, it is Friday, the 5th of January, 2024. I've had a nice break off for Christmas. And I'm heading on my first session of the year. I'm heading to the doorstep lake because for those of you guys that know, last year I was trying to catch a 20 out of there. Well, now Haynes Outdoors, who's another YouTuber, makes, makes YouTube videos, has seen what I'm doing on there. He's now signed up and he's actually fishing this lake as well. Not necessarily today, but he's on the ticket and he's challenged me and he said, let's have a race to see who can catch the first 20. So the first part of this year, the first couple of two or three months, I'm gonna be smashing this out, fishing here a lot and trying to beat him in a race to my first 20 from the Dorset Lake. Right, well, I managed to get to the lake. There's nobody on, which means I can get to my favorite swim but I'm just gonna check it out to see if it's flooded. I've never seen the water level so high here. Let's have a look. Our survey says, oh God, oh wow. Um, not exactly the best. So <laughs> here's the swim. I mean, usually it comes out to about there and goes across and you put your rods here. I mean, it's still doable, but it's not ideal, is it? Ah, what I've done is I've got a kilo of 14 mil OG fruit and nut and I've just halved all of them and covered them in flat spots. So they've got a nice bit of oil on. I mean, I did them a couple of days ago, so they've dried out a little bit, but yeah, I just want them to flutter down and sit nicely on top of the leaf litter. And I'm just gonna throw two scoopfuls out. I've already done one. I'm gonna throw another scoopful out around here and I'm gonna do a couple of scoopfuls for my other rod. But I've now got wet feet, and this is why. Look at it. Surprised there's not carp swimming up around the bloody path. <sighs> Got to pull your, pull your socks up. I can't film this one-handed, sorry guys, but I'm gonna pull them up. They've already leaked. I'll make my way through. Well, what did you get for Christmas? I was a good boy last year, which meant I got what I asked for, and I asked for pair of these now i think that these are going to give me a little bit of an advantage in my fishing this year binoculars because a lot of people don't realize just how good something like this can be in your fishing you know especially when you're fishing a, a water such as this where it's sort of like quite narrow and quite long if i see a fish jumping down the other end i can sort of have a look see if there's any bubbles or there's more fish or, or, or more signs of fish crashing down there and then the beauty of it is, if I'm fishing a lake where it's quite quiet, like today I'm the only one fishing on this lake, if I keep seeing a fish move over there, I can zoom in on it. And if I really think there's a good sign of me going down there and catching a fish, I can use these to, uh, to get down there. Not only that, but in the summer, when the water's a bit clearer and the sun's sh shining down on the water, I can use these to zoom in to see if that is a twig or whether that is a fish swimming with his back out the water. Don't worry, Billy's still with us. He had a few to drink over Christmas and New Year, so he's just in recovery at the moment, but he is there. He's there and he, he's still alive, just about. But uh, yeah, rods are out, looking lovely. Got the right hand one over to that spot over there, which some of you guys know about watching my previous videos from last year from this lake and my left hand rod. I mean, I don't have to tell you, you guys know where that is. I've got a fruit and nut original wafter on the right hand rod. I've got a bit of fake corn on the left hand rod. They're both in solid bags. They're both with the Parker Bates OG mini mix. And they're both gonna do me a fish. Now, I know this isn't gonna be easy, but before Christmas, I think there were five fish stocked in here. And I believe they were all over the 20 pound barrier. If that's the case, that increases my chances massively. Come on the carp. Come on, the Parker Bates. Now this fish is nowhere near that 20 pound target, but it's another fish, first one of the year, and I'm made up with it. Happy days, it saves a blank. Come on. Ah, oh, I've just lost one. Same rod, left arm rod, away again. Do -do -do -do, started running. I was just actually, I was getting my stuff together. I've got my wrap sticks, I pulled them out, brought them down to the water, packing them away. Left arm rod, do -do 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 -do. picks the rod up, nothing on the end so definitely wasn't a liner something i picked it up and it was there but it obviously wasn't hooked very well because i'm using light leads now because of the silt i'm using lighter leads so i guess the the hook hold isn't as good where 
the lead's lighter obviously it's just nipping the lip rather than the, the the weight of the lead sinking that hook into the mouth so i think it must have just been lit like caught on the lip and as i've picked it up i've just pulled it out of the lip which is a shame but it would have been more of a shame if we didn't catch anything and we'd lost that one so i've got about half an hour left rod's gone straight back out again and uh yeah like i say half hour left hopefully it goes again but yeah it's one of those things isn't it? it's one of those things well the water level has fallen and it is a beautiful january evening look at this the sun coming down shining on the back of the trees over there but yeah i'm just packing away i got the backrests away just about to take off the bite alarms and put the front rests away but yeah it looks like that might be it one carp and one lost right well welcome back to another video it's super super sunny today we are back on the doorstep lake and i say we i'm with joe today he doesn't really want to be in the in the video too much so i'm not gonna not gonna plaster him on the, all over the video so don't worry about that if he does catch a nice fish i will take a photo of it and put it in the video but again we're still after that 20 pounder from the doorstep lake haynes i'm coming for you mate i'm gonna keep trying and trying and trying i'm putting the effort in it's just a day session again today i've got the day off work so we've come down we're gonna try and nick one um the five 20 pluses that went in before christmas one of them came out it's been caught so hopefully there's signs that it's starting to come out and that was only a couple of weeks ago as well um so you know even though it's cold there's still signs of fish coming out it's gonna be a tough one i'll be very happy with just one fish today um even though they are still coming out it's still very very cold and we know what winter winter carp fishing is like you know tom and i have just come back from that session at shearwater and that was really really tough so yeah just one fish today would be good um if none a little bit disappointing if more happy days right well new year new me that's what they say isn't it just on that note i wanted to bring it up because i've actually changed my tactics for fishing here at the doorstep lake because i've always come down there i've always used solid bags and i've always caught small carp and i was listening to a podcast the other day uh, a fishing related one i can't remember who it was that was talking but they were saying that people have or it might have been a youtube video actually but they were saying how people when they want to change what they're doing to change the result rather than change what they're doing they stick with it until it happens rather than trying to make it happen so what he's saying is basically if you let's put it in relation to me on this lake if i keep using solid bags yes i will keep catching but i keep catching small carp and my theory behind it was i'll keep catching the small ones and eventually a bigger one will come along and take it and, 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 you know and i'll be into a bigger fish which could happen i'm not saying it wouldn't happen but he was saying that you need to change what you're doing to catch the bigger fish and i thought that's interesting so i thought i'm gonna try it so this year i'm using ronnie rigs now i've never used well i say never use ronnie rigs the first time i used ronnie rigs was this year um at shearwater in a video that came out in january that you saw with tom and i blanked <laughs> but, it, but it was a hard session everyone blanked on everything you know i tried zigs and that as well didn't happen so i thought you know what i'm coming down here i'm trying ronnie rigs I've got a snowman on the left hand one. I've got a larger 15 mil pop up. It's trimmed down just a little bit to balance it out, but I've got a larger pop up than I would usually use on the right hand one. So I'm going with different rigs, bigger baits, and I've taken out the solid bags because the solid bags, although I'm catching fish, it has that little mini mix pellet in it. And I think sometimes that might attract the smaller fish. So bigger baits over a, a, a decently, I don't want to say heavy baited area, but a decently baited area. Um, with with ronnie's over the top and, and, and bigger baits you know snowman's pop-ups and i've changed the way that i'm fishing and let's see if it can change the results and so here they are these are the pineapple fluoro pop-ups from parker baits if you do want to get your hands on these guys you can use code south coast angler at checkout for 10 percent off your first order and they smell amazing they come with a, a a little sort of like juice pot just to to enhance the flavor of them and you get them in uh in fluoro green or yellow whatever you want to call that and then orange as well i'm slowly running out because i quite i quite like using these actually i use these quite a lot on uh, on wab mill um i was fishing d-rigs with them but you have to trim them right down um and also i was cutting them in half and using them with bottom baits so half a bottom bait and then half of that on top just to get it to sit up right and um give it that flavor and that smell but there we go so that is what i'm fishing on the right hand one i've got a yellow one on or a green whatever you want to call it 
and on the other one i've got a 12 mil og fish pop up again guys south coast angler and check out for your first order and you can get 10 percent off but these are the fish version and these are a smaller bait but i've got this snowman style with a fake bit of corn on top so i'm actually using a pink one with a fake bit of top with a fake bit of corn on top of that so they smell brilliant it's something that i've not tried before as you can see i've got a full tub of these i don't often use these um i'm much more a fruit and nut kind of guy but i've got these in fruit and nut as well i just thought i'd try fish um i've got the pineapple one out on the right so that's sort of like a fruity flavor isn't it and then obviously a, a, a fish flavor on a left hand one but i can always swap that out for fruit and nut if it doesn't work but yeah we're here for a few hours and uh like i say hopefully changing tactics can change the results Right, well, crazily enough, I've been sat up there having a sort of catch up in a chinwag with Joe and time has flown by, absolutely flown by. Um, I've actually got to be off at three o'clock today, which is earlier than I wanted to be here, but I'm going out with my parents for dinner, so that's no problem. But I just can't believe how we've, it's like midday now, we've got like three hours left, which is not long at all. Um, and we got the rods out probably half eight nine o'clock so yes it's crazy i really would have thought between the two of us even though i know it's cold it's always good for a bite here but as it happens there's nothing to report yet no signs um somebody has rocked up and started fishing around the back of the island i know who that is actually he fishes up here quite a lot and he is very successful and i just said to joe the fact that he's fishing up our end of the lake gives me confidence because like I say, he's very experienced on these lakes. He knows what he's doing. And if he's in this area of the lake, we know that we are where... I mean, he could be wrong. He's only human. But like I say, he's very knowledgeable of these places. And um, if he thinks that's where the fish are holding up, then I'm glad we're at this end where he is. So, but yeah, just trying to carry on. Just trying to dig out these tough, cold winter months and seeing if we can chase that 20. Well, there is a very, very harsh, cold wind coming in now not a heavy wind but you can see it blowing across the lake just a small breeze but it's very very harsh like it's very cold you can probably see how red my nose is and my cheeks are the, the fish are probably just out there not moving much laying on the bottom and even if you do find them you're probably chucking your rig on them and they're just probably not that interested because they don't need to eat do they they don't need to i mean eventually they will need to eat but if they're not moving much they don't need the energy they're quite happy to just lay there and try and keep warm so yeah all you can do is uh chuck your odds out and sort of hope for the best and looks like it's going to be a tricky tricky winter on this lake but um looks like we're not catching nothing this time just got to keep trying and hopefully when i next come back down here it might be a different result today's been a real tough one right well i am heading back to the doorstep lake we had a lot a lot of crazy wind last night so i'm hoping that there's no trees over um also last week it was actually iced over we, it was down to like minus five at some points last week so it's been fishing really tough obviously the last couple of sessions that i've had down there i've struggled so i've got a few hours today i've got a haircut booked in for later and i'm going around my parents for lunch sorry for dinner so uh yeah i've got a few hours and i'm trying to put as much time into this lake when i've got the time as i possibly can to try and complete this challenge between me and haynes who i must admit haynes hasn't been fishing this lake hard he's fished it once or twice but i really really need to try and knuckle down and catch that 20 not just to compete with haynes but also a bit after this 20 pound fish from this lake for a long time so it's time to really try, get back on it, and see if we can have something out. The weather's slightly warmer. Hopefully, that brings changes and brings some bites. Right, well, I've not actually fished this part of the lake before. So, I'm gonna have to try and wrap up and find my distance. But, the reason why, oh, that's not bad. The reason why um, I've not really fished this part of the lake, and I am now all of a sudden, is because there's a couple of locals that fish on here and I say local like I'm not a local but 
I've been speaking to a couple of guys and they seem to do quite well off of these swims. trying different tactics, trying different things. You know, I was on spinner rigs last time I was here. I'm back on the solid bags this time, and it's only because they've worked for me. I've had success on them. Yes, they've been catching me smaller fish, and yes, I did hear something saying, to catch a bigger fish, you need to change up a little bit, but I have changed the area that I'm fishing in. So I just want a bend in the rods. I just want to try and catch a fish. I know I'm after that 20, but the way it's fishing at the moment, it would be nice to just have any fish at all. So yeah, I have got both rods on solid bags and they are fishing about a rod length. Apparently that's a rod length now, <laughs> but they're so close together, they've been, they're fishing about a rod length apart. I'm not back leading um, and I've got my GoPro on as well. So hopefully I can get some first person footage if I do hook up of me playing a fish, because that's something I want to incorporate into my videos a bit more going forward. So first person action. I've got this camera, I might as well use it. And obviously it's better for you guys to see videos where I'm actually playing the fish rather than just holding it up saying, look, Here's the fish that I caught. So yeah, just add something a little bit different. There's a moorhen over on my spot right now. Hopefully some fish can move in, but if I don't get a bite within the next hour or so, I'm probably gonna change my spots and uh, see if we can find the fish. Right now, because you guys have given me a bit of stick in the past about my meal deal sandwich choice, just ham no mayonnaise, I've decided to do something to jazz them up a little bit. I've bought with me some cheese. Other supermarkets are available. But I've got myself some cheese and I've bought my Ridge Monkey sandwich maker and I've put a bit of cheese in there. I'm going to whack this back on there and I'm going to toast them. So I've got ham and cheese toasties. So it won't be just boring plain ham sandwiches. Fingers crossed they turn out okay. Actually, I just want to say a big shout out to Dave. If Dave, if you're watching, cheers for showing me this, mate. Look at that. No mess. Ham and cheese toasty. Lovely. And then I'm going to get the kettle on. Oh, I've got this, by the way, look. To go over the over the top of the stove to balance that better. And then, yeah, like I say, I'm going to get the kettle on. And uh, I'm going to have a ham and cheese toastie and a coffee. They do say in winter that you have to find a fish and that's the beauty of fishing solid bags you know you don't have to put a load of bait out and fish on top of that bait obviously i've scattered a little bit over where i thought the fish might be um, or where i was trying to trying to bring some fish in but like i say the beauty of solid bags is if nothing's happening you can just cast out to another place or to another place or to another place and you know wherever you're casting you've got that little bed of bait those those little micro pellet around your hook bait so no matter where you cast a solid bag You've always got bait around your hook bait. Um, with that said, I've given my left arm rod about an hour and a half. Didn't have a sniff on it. Well, I've not had a sniff on either rod, to be fair. So left arm rod, I've reeled up and I've just cast out just a little bit further along, along the far bank to the left, just to see if I can try and find a fish or try and find where they're holding up. But even if you are fishing on top of fish, especially in the winter, it doesn't mean to say that you're gonna, you know, they're gonna take the bait and you're gonna hook up. It doesn't always work like that, so. I might do the same with the right-hand rod, although I am tempted to leave the right-hand rod where it is because that is fishing over that sort of corn and pellet mix that I put out this morning. So if they do want to decide to, where the weather is a little bit warmer, if they do want to move and have a little munch, it might be good to keep that one there and use the left-hand one to just keep moving about every sort of hour and a half or so, a couple of hours. But I probably only got a, you know, a few hours left here. I'm not exactly blessed for time. Well, the left arm rod is in, but the net is not in the water. I just had a run on the left arm rod. But I picked the rod up and there was nothing there. It could well have been a liner. It could have just been lightly hooked and managed to spin it by the time I got to the rod. I think it was a liner, but it was like a heavy liner. 
because the hook's still sharp. I've, I've come back, I've looked at it. I mean, to be fair, as soon as I cast it, I knew it was a bloody good cast. And I thought I was confident that it would do me a bite. I'm gutted. But it's a positive sign. There are fish in the area. <laughs> Even if it is a liner and not a pickup, there are fish there. So I'm going to wrap it back up, get it back out with another bag on it. And I think I'm going to redo the right one as well. I'm going to redo both rods. Well, that's it. I'm all packed away for this session. I'm just going back to the swim to pick up the last few bits, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Um, last year, I, I, <laughs> I, I caught every time I came. I, I wasn't, I was finding it really hard to blank on here. Not that I was trying to, I said that wrong. You know what I mean? Every time I was, I was coming up here, I was catching fish. Even if it was just one, I was still catching. And this year, I mean, it might be because it's cold, it might be because it's January, it might be because it's winter. I don't know. But for some reason, this year, I'm struggling on here. I've had a few sessions now and nothing to be returned. So back to the drawing board, I think. I'm going to have to sit down and try and think things through and try and get back on it because I need to forget about even trying to catch a 20 on here. I need to just catch, go back to basics and... I don't know, maybe come back in a few weeks and, uh, or maybe not a few weeks, just, you know, you have those sessions, you just need to go home, sit down, chill out, and then come back. That's what I need to do. <sighs> right, well, I am back and I'm absolutely buzzing because in this session, I'm going to do something on this lake that I've never done before. And I know you've heard me say that before, but I'm actually going to be able to put some time into this session because... I'm on for 24 hours, that's right, I'm doing overnight. And I've never, never done an overnight session here. So, I've got the lake to myself, it's midweek. The two bailiffs are down here, actually the bailiff and the, the owner. So, I'm gonna have a chat with them. They put another 20 pound carp in here last week. So, there must be now around 12 to 15 in here, I reckon, 20 plus fish. I've got a night on here, I can finally spend some time, put some hours in building up building up a swim and yeah it is the end of january i've not had a great start to the year i've only had one fish all january so it's been tough going but i'm gonna go and speak to those guys find out where the fish are and hopefully something can happen come on well i'm just looking across now towards the island usually i'm in a swim to my right so this is the island swim but you're not allowed to fish past the island. And usually I fish in that swim to the right and fish across that white post. But I know in the summer, there's a massive weed bed up around the back of the island. And that's where a lot of the carp get in the summer. Um, but obviously this time of year, the weeds are down and the weeds are dried up. But the guys were saying they still think the fish are holding up in that area. Obviously there might still be a bit of like low lying weed and stuff, but obviously there's gonna be a lot of natural food in there. And I believe it's quite snaggy around there, but they did say that is gonna be my best chance. So with that said, that's a bird. With that said, I'm gonna head round there, and just watch the water for 20, 20, 30 minutes before I make a decision, but I'm definitely fishing up this end. I've decided to stick to what I know, stick to my guns and stick to my favorite swim. So I'm gonna jump in this one even though I think there are some fish holding up over there. I mean, no one's fishing around the back of there. I could probably chuck one too there. I've got plenty of room. There's no danger that it's gonna go around the back of the island. And I did lose what I thought was a 20 here before over that, that spot. So I feel confident here. I'm gonna to stick to what I know. And if I have nothing tonight, I can always move into that swim tomorrow but I just feel like it's looking perfect for a bite and I think I might have a few tonight. I'm really excited about today's session. I'm, I'm like a kid in a sweet shop. I just need to get into my car, unpack it, get the rods out. I've got a good feeling about this one. Really good feeling. Well, quick update. I've finally got the rods out. It is actually quite dark now, but this camera's awesome in low level lighting. I'm gonna talk you through them, but it has taken me a while to get set up. I sort of took my time with 
setting up. I mean, I was speaking to the bailiff quite a bit um, and I was watching the water quite a bit as well. We were having a good old chat. Haven't seen much moving. So I've got, I know I said I wasn't gonna do it, but I've got two solid bags on. I feel most confident in the solid bags. Um, yeah, I'm fishing towards my two favorite spots. It's just, that's how I've caught down here before. That's what I know. That's what seems to have worked for me. And um, we'll see what happens during the night, but hopefully we can nick a quick one before it gets too dark. I'm gonna set the rest of my stuff up. I've blinked and it's pitch black. I feel like I've been here for not even an hour. I have obviously, but it feels like the time I set up, got the rods out, it just went pitch black. So apparently it's got good night form on here, but it is still cold. I think it's meant to drop down to about three degrees tonight. So hopefully it doesn't shut the fish down too much. But yeah, I'll give the rods a couple more hours. And if I've not had anything, I'll refresh them before I go to bed. It's about half past six now. And then, yeah, hopefully we wake up during the night with a fish or two. Well, check this out. It is 8 p.m. Both rods are in. <laughs> I've got two fish in the net. Had a double take. Look. <laughs> Wait ages for a fish and then two at once. Happy blooming days. <laughs> right, well, I'm not going to weigh these two. Not too dissimilar in size, quite similar. One's probably a scraper double and the other one's probably six, seven pound. But yeah, there we go. Two fish, happy days. There they go. Come on the carp. Haynes doesn't have to worry just yet about those kinds of fish. But it is interesting though how I said about going back to basics, going back to simple, sticking to what I know. And I've done that. I've, I've done what I've used on here before in court. And I've got the same results. It's nice to get back to catching again. This is, this is what... It all rolls into the same thing, doesn't it? I was saying about how I want to go back to basics. I'm overcomplicating it. I'm going to use the tactics that I know that's proven for me that works. And I do. And I chuck out two solid bags and I catch two fish. And I'm like, brilliant, I'm catching again. But when you look at it, I'm catching the same kind of fish that I was catching before. It's weird, but I'm slowly unlocking this place. I've put on two more solid bags. They've gone straight back out. But if they go off again with similar size fish on again, tomorrow we're trying something different. It's not been a very productive nighttime session at all. I had those two fish yesterday. The double take in the evening and then that was it all night all through the night nothing although promising signs i did see or sorry i did hear um a couple of fish moving um like coming out and crashing up this end of the lake so it does sort of give me confidence that the fish are up in this area obviously caught too so that checks out but yeah i don't know i real both both rods back in both came in fine just untouched maybe the drop in temperature just shut them up again because it did drop down to about three degrees so i don't know if that was cool enough to just slow them down um but yeah i mean i did say that i was going to go on different tactics i mean i proved yesterday didn't i that going back to basics and sticking to what you know obviously works because it produced um, but I can't get out of my mind the fact that I did get the same results. So with that said, um, I've actually changed my left hand rod now onto a stiff hinge rig, something a little bit different. I wanted to try it. So um, I've put out bait on both spots this morning. Left hand rod's gone out, bang, straight over the spot on a stiff hinge rig with a fruit and nut 15 mil pop up. And then uh, the right hand rod, I'm going to keep the right hand rod on the solid bags just in case I don't want to commit both rods to stiff hinges in case it doesn't work and then we go a whole day without a bite 
like I say, I'd still rather catch smaller fish than nothing. So we're going back with another solid bag. Parker Bates mini mix with a yellow magic bean in there as well. And that'll be going out on the right hand spot. So hopefully we can still catch another couple of fish today. That's the plan. And obviously the plan is to uh, bag one of those 20s. Annoyingly enough, I did have my GoPro on my chest mount when I got that double take last night and I was pressing record trying to film it, but the GoPro wasn't turning on. Now, I made sure it was fully charged when I got here, but it, it, I can't, even now I can't get it to turn on. So um, I was speaking to Chunkster about it and he said that in the cold, um, GoPros don't really work very well. So I don't know whether it was that or, or I've got an issue with it. It's quite an old GoPro, so I do need to update it. But yeah, I don't know. It's a shame, but there we go. It is what it is. You know what, come to think of it, maybe I should have held those um, fish up yesterday for a photo because I didn't bother weighing them and holding them up. I mean, I wasn't too fussy about weighing them, but I thought I'd have had another couple of fish by now. Like, I've done sessions on here where I've spent six, seven hours and had three or four fish. Do you know what I mean? So to come here and spend the night here you know, the whole of sort of yesterday evening, the night, the whole of this morning, and we're moving into the afternoon now, and all I've had is two fish. I'm shocked. I, I honestly thought I was going to get more, but listen, it's fishing, isn't it? Not catching, it's fishing. We know that. Again, I know, I'm sorry to bring out the excuses, but it is a cool winter month, although it's not as cold as, as January's usually go. But yeah, it's just, it's odd, it's odd. But I'm going to probably give it another couple of hours and then I'm going to start making a slow pack down. But yeah, I just, I really thought I'd be in for something better today or, or this session. <sighs> it's starting to get me down a bit because I'm really trying to chase this 20 and I'm struggling to catch. I mean, at least I've had two and we're catching again, but I just, it's starting to, I don't know. I'm starting to feel a little bit like it's never going to happen. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon now. The rods are in. The bivvy's away. The swim's pretty much tidy. I've got some rubbish to throw away, but... Ah, oh, tough old January. I think, you know what? I've landed three fish in January, and I think that's more than what I did last year in last January. So I don't think I could be too hard on myself. It would be nice to obviously try and catch a couple more or, or slightly bigger ones, but we're just gonna have to keep coming back. I mean, that's what keeps us, that's what keeps us coming back fishing, isn't it? If it was that easy, um, we just, we wouldn't come fishing. It's all about the hunt uh, and, and the ways in which you can change things, do things differently, work things out to try and get the result that you want. So. We're going to go back, we're going to do a bit of troubleshooting like we always do, and we're going to come back, and eventually, it will happen, I will catch a 20 from here. Good morning, people. I've got a very, very, very rare weekend off. So, what better way to spend it than down the doorstep lake after one of these 20s? Now, would you believe it? Sean has been putting more 20s in this lake. There is over 15 known 20s in this lake now to go at. So my chances are increasing, and also, because I'm off all weekend... I might be able to do the night tonight. In fact, I think I am going to do the night tonight. So that gives me a plenty, um, that gives me plenty of hours to have a real good crack at it because I've just been doing a few hours here, a few hours there. I've done one night on it before, but this time we get a whole day, Saturday, Saturday night, and then I've got to be away about midday on Sunday because I've got other plans. But I've never fished here on the weekend and I think it might be quite busy, which might not be a bad thing because I've usually fished it when it's quiet, but maybe if it's busy, it, and there's more lines in the water it might move the fish around i don't know it was very cold last night it's been relatively mild in february it's been very wet but it hasn't been cold until now last night there was a frost on the car i'm hoping that hasn't shut the fish down let's find out right well it did start raining whilst i was setting up so i didn't film anything of me setting up i just wanted to get the rods out get the bivvy up and then check back in with you guys on the video and um yeah, so I'll update you. I'm basically fishing 
where I don't want to be fishing because it's the weekend. Obviously, I don't often fish weekends because of work. I usually work over the weekends, but I've got the weekend off and I come down and I thought it'd be busy. There, I think there's like two swims free left on a lake. Everybody's up, up the deeper end. That's where I wanted to be. Like I say, it was cold last night, so I feel like the fish might have moved into the deeper water. I'm basically fishing. Where I'm fishing now is pretty much the shallow end of the lake. Um, I don't want to be here, but I haven't got much choice. Um, I'm around the back of the island. I'll show you in a minute. I've definitely wanted to put a session in, a decent session in on this swim, but not in this situation, in these conditions. However, there is a full moon tonight. Now, a lot of people told me, I've never fished a full moon, but a lot of people told me, full moon increases carp activity or fish activity so some people think it's a load of old cobblers some people believe it let me know in the comments if you believe it tell me about your experiences fishing on a full moon and tell me if it's just a load of old cobblers let me know in the comments it'd be interesting to read some of your guys experiences fishing in a full moon right so here's my swim the rain has stopped so i'm going to go out and show you but yeah i've got my two rods out we got billy with us of course we have and if you notice, look what I've got back. The Fox Mini Micro X's. Now, obviously, I had these before, got rid of them, had a few different bite alarms, ended up with a Sonic Gizmo 2s. And I was saying how happy I was with those gizmos. And they, they were good alarms, they're great alarms. But I just couldn't help but think I've just really missed my Mini Micro X's. And so I had to get them back. I'm much happier that I've got them back now. Don't get me wrong, the Sonic Gizmo 2s, brilliant alarms. But just something said, like... I just miss those mic mini microns so i've got them back the only thing is they don't have a night glow feature but it, it really doesn't matter that much does it um but yeah here's the swim so got the island right there this is a real nice marginal area where i've got a solid bag in and i've got one off the edge of the island there as well so two solid bags out i just wanted to get the rods out quickly bish bash bosh and then set up um and that's what I've done. I've chucked two solid bags. I'm going to leave them for a few hours. If we get nothing, then I'm going to try and tie up some just normal hair rigs. I might fish a snowman on one, a wafter on the other, or bottom bait. I don't know. But yeah, at the moment, it's just two solid bags and uh, looking to see if we can get anything in the first few hours. And also, I've misplaced my GoPro um, charger. So I would love to have been able to bring my GoPro with me on this session or just any session going forward. But I've lost my charger, the battery's gone flat. I bought a new SD card for it, so I've got plenty of room on it now. But yeah, rods have been out a couple of hours. We've had nothing. Um, I've just thrown a scoop of chopped fruit and nut boilies, um, half boilies, crumb, sweet corn, and fruit and nut sauce. It's, it's the mix, I'll show you actually. So yeah, like I say, it's a, uh, very fruit and nutty based. There's half boilies in there. These have just been chopped in half. Well, this one hasn't been, but yeah, half boilies in there. And then we've got crumb in there as well. Sweet corn, the fruit and nut sauce, and also some Himalayan rock salt is in there. And I did also just feed myself, but I didn't show that. I had a sausage bap and a bacon bap. Lovely. And just like that, the sun's out. I have been fishing for a few hours now and I've not had a sniff. Um, I think I'm gonna, but this is a thing, right? I'm thinking about redoing the rods, changing the solid bags onto, I've made up some slip D rigs actually with a, a coated braid. But I'm thinking to myself, I know how my solid bags work. I've seen them underwater and I know they're there waiting for a fish to pick it up. So. I'm starting to think, do I leave the solid bags out and leave the rods out and don't touch them because I know they're there? Or will a change in approach change my fortunes? I don't know. I don't know. This is fishing, isn't it? We don't know these things. This is what makes anglers better than other anglers. They know what to do, when to do it. And it's something I'm still learning. Surely, I mean, the solid bags, I know they're under there and they're presented well. Why would I need to change that? I don't. I don't need to change that. Interesting, interestingly enough, there's a little flat spot just come up on my right hand rod. Look at that. I haven't put any bait out there. Just as I've been talking to the camera, that flat spot's appeared. So, is my right hand rod about to go off? Come on. Well, I'm learning 
the etiquette of carp fishing on the weekends. Maybe I don't. Maybe I need to take advantage of the fact that I don't fish weekends. Advantage of the fact that I can fish during the week because I'm hearing an argument going on right now. Two swims over there. You can't fish there, mate. Oh, I can. This is my water. I've been there all night. It's it's really not hard, guys. Especially on a place like this. There's far margin markers. Each swim has a set marker. You can fish between there and there. Why is there an argument? If you're within your boundaries, no issue. <sighs> Honestly, like, weekend fishing. Sounds fun. <laughs> I've just seen the first show. I don't know if you can see the bubbles over the back there. Can you see those bubbles over there? A fish just jumped out. So because I've had absolutely no sniffs on my right hand rod or any of my rods but my right hand rod i've reeled it in from the solid bag over there and i've just chucked out a single right on top of where it showed and i must have it showed and i must have cast it out within 15 20 seconds of it showing so hopefully it hasn't spooked and if it's still in the area it might find my white magic bean the weather is so up and down. It's, it was absolutely tipping it down and now the sun's out. It's just classic English weather. But I've just had a visit from my uncle, my cousin and the bailiff. And the whole time I've not had a sniff. We have seen a mirror carp jump a couple of times. And that is where my left hand rod is along the, the, marginal, re um, the marginal trees. But it's like the trees come out. I don't know if you can see that, but the trees come out and it's right beyond there. You can't get to it, basically. Um, and I think that's why, obviously, the fish are there. They're safe there. They know, no matter what swim you're in, you can't get to that point, which is why they sort of hold up in there. But obviously, with the freshest bait in the game out there, I'm trying to lure them out um, into, into the spot. But yeah, it's tough. It really is tough. Um, I'm a bit down, down in the dumps, really, about what to do on here because I've been struggling here for well as you'd have seen in the video I've been struggling here for for months now um come on I just want one fish one fish that's all I want also actually I did say about Dom um Haynes Outdoors who I was sort of having a little competition on here with seeing who can get the first 20 give him his dues he's not really fished here so I don't think he's taking it that seriously. Um, to be fair, he's on other club water. He's joined another club as well as this one and he's on different waters and stuff. So he's got his own thing going on, which is absolutely fine. But it doesn't mean that it's gonna stop me trying to catch a 20 from here, so. Oh. And of course, if you haven't checked out Haynes Outdoors, go and check him out. He makes fishing videos as well. And like I say, he fishes local waters, it's similar to me. Um, but I think he's on uh, the Christchurch ticket actually as well. So he fishes some of those waters as well. But yeah, there we go. It is what it is. We carry on. I probably am going to do the night. I'm going to get into bed and cry until one of those rods goes off. Right, well, it is very, very dark now. Um, still nothing to report. Like I say, meant to be a full moon tonight, but I don't know. I can't see it. It's quite cloudy over there. I don't know where the moon is. But it's clear over here. You can see a star there. Look at that. Mental. Um, yeah, nothing to report, unfortunately. I guess, as it goes. As always, I'm going to get some shut eye. Have a real rest and relax tonight. And, um, yeah. The next clip you'll see will either be me with a fish. Or, like we always say, it will be the next day. So... Which one will it be? I've got a feeling I know which one it's going to be. <laughs> it's super, super cold. The temperature's dropped right off. It's meant to go down to like one degree tonight. Right, well, I've not got a carp. And it's not the morning. I'm actually at home. I've packed away. Um, I thought about it long and hard because I was planning on doing the night. I wasn't, to be fair, when I turned up, I wasn't sure whether I was going to do the night. I was going to see what the weather was doing, see how the... Um, how it's fishing and make a decision from there and it got to quite late sort of like 5 6 p.m it started going dark and i thought that's it i'm in for the night and i laid there for another couple of hours and i thought they got to about half eight and i thought 
I've been here since half eight this morning. I was like, I've not even had a liner. I've not had a sniff. Like, I wasn't cold. And to be honest with you, if anything, it was more effort for me to pack away in the dark than it was for me to stay. But, you know, I've got to be true to myself. And I was laying there and I just thought, do you know that phrase in football? They could play for another 90 minutes and they still won't score. And that's the way I felt. And if I'm wrong and I've made the wrong judgment call, I'm wrong. But fishing's all about enjoying yourself, um, getting out, getting away from everything, having a bit of an ex escape, enjoying it. And I just, I wasn't. I, I couldn't lie to myself. I was laying there and I just thought, I'm just not feeling this. You know, I could have quite easily not put today's session in this video, but this is real. Um, and I need to take you along with, with me and my story on this lake. And you know what? It's I'm sort of beating myself up a little bit, to be honest with you. Um, I am. I've set myself a target on this lake and I'm so hell-bent on, on doing it. It's just getting to a point now where I'm getting really frustrated with it. Um, it's not a difficult challenge at all, but I'm, I'm struggling to even catch a fish at the moment. And it's really starting to, to get to me. So I think I'm going to stay off that lake now for a month or two. Um, I'll wait for spring to really kick in, um, and then maybe go back with a, with a fresher mind and, um, yeah, just, just try it again. But I'm going to end, I'm going to wrap up this series of videos. The last couple of months I've spent down here, um, you know, January, February, trying to catch up 20. It, to be fair, it's hard months. It is hard. Like I say, February's not been cold. January was cold. It's starting to get cold again. It's not been an easy couple of months, but yeah, it's definitely probably, well, it, it definitely is the wrong time of the year to be to be doing this. So, yeah, I don't know. I need a break from it. And, um, yeah, I guess this is the end of part one. If you did like, please subscribe. Leave a like down below. Yeah, maybe I need to stop being so hard on myself, but there'll be a part two. We'll come back to it and we'll hit it in spring. Cheers for staying with me and thanks for watching it. Peace out.